uh, I've been here in this aqua biotech company for six weeks. So please take this into account that all the previous speakers, they have like PhDs in their back and <laughs> I've been uh, doing uh, mm, this work for only six weeks. So just a little bit background. Uh, so maybe some of you uh, would be interested. Some students may be looking for funding to go abroad. Some businesses uh, looking for students. Uh, or maybe looking some other funding, uh, funding because Climate Kick actually supports <laughs> quite a lot of uh, climate-related uh, activities. Uh, they have this Climate Smart Agriculture Booster, so probably this is related to uh, aqua uh, ponics. Sustainable land use, uh, there's uh, some money available. This Pathfinder, I think it's uh, a program to support uh, early idea phase uh, mm, things so 50,000 euros for a startup uh, program uh, and I was involved in this pioneers uh, program so this is uh, a program for for people who have already some experience mm, they want to get a little bit new experience change a little bit their field so uh, I took a six-week placement here uh, we have we had also a small uh, local project so I met uh, uh, other climate minded people in Estonia we got uh, quite good financial support for this and also <coughs> some uh, previous uh, people from previous years gave a lot of uh, uh, mentoring and also I don't know like 25% of the people who took part in this uh, are now um, starting their own businesses in the field of climate uh, change. So at least it was motivating for me in the beginning. So who can take part? Businesses, research institutes, institutes or public sector. Uh, when I applied, there was around 400 different placements I could apply to and I came here. So. These are the countries uh, that are participating in the program. Uh, so, uh, what was my project here in Aquapiatic? Uh, we already had a lot of talks today about uh, remineralization. So, how to get, uh, how to not waste fish sludge, but use it in, uh, use it in a more sustainable way. So, I had a little bit time. Uh, not one year to read uh, to do the research i had to read the papers in one week so then i had to design uh, the or design the reactor and also uh, build the reactor and test it uh, quickly so and i had six weeks what are the possible optimization criteria so there are different ways how to approach this problem what to do with the sludge you can uh, make it into energy you can take out the the nutrients, uh, you can try to uh, improve the profits of the facility. Uh, you might have some size limit, uh, limitations, you might want to make it as easy as possible so um, people with no training can use it. So there are very, very many different ways how to approach this uh, biodigester. Uh, first, I looked if there's in some money in sludge. Uh, we just heard that there is, but uh, Yesterday we heard that uh, a hydroponics farm, they don't spend almost any money on, on nutrients. At the moment, the nutrients do not cost anything. So there's money-wise, there is no point uh, in, in building, at least in, in smaller scales. Maybe in, if you go into really, really big projects, then you might have, uh, might have the, the need or the potential to build this biofacility. Because actually you need to put a lot of money into building a bioreactor and maintaining it. So getting only a few euros uh, uh, for the nutrients, uh, I don't know. I think it's, we have to discuss this during the lunch break maybe. And also biogas production. So I looked into this uh, a smaller 40 cubic meter system. It produces 50 kilograms of sludge per day. And if you want to get energy out of that 50 kilograms of sludge per day, it's nothing. You can maybe you have one lighter full of gas from that. So there's no money in uh, in in a smaller scale system. If you scale it up and mm, combine it with local uh, 
waste streams than uh, something uh, maybe. So uh, I had to look at it uh, from another way. So I opted for uh, a really small, uh, as small as possible, as uh, as easy to use as possible system. Uh, and I also wanted to to see if there are potential to recycle some nutrients. And also I wanted to avoid greenhouse gas production in the facility. So we didn't. I didn't want to build a, a separate gas collection system. So I opted for for an aerobic uh, system instead. Uh, people before me uh, mentioned anaerobic digestion. So there are some differences. Uh, aerobic, you usually don't produce uh, uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, it smells better or it doesn't smell as bad as as anaerobic system. Uh, you will have a pH reduction uh, like uh, with, with aerobic system. This means uh, you can really easily, as, uh, as Boris already told, that with pH reduction you get uh, almost half of the phosphorus uh, or even more from the sludge just by reducing the pH. And aerobically you do it naturally. I don't know how you could manage to do it uh, anaerobically, but... Uh, If you do aerobic uh, digestion, you reduce the pH of the, uh, of the treatment facility and you release phosphorus. Did you measure that? Sorry? Did you measure that? No, I, <laughs> I just started the reactor. But aerobic uh, treatment reduces pH, or am I wrong here already? Uh, maybe with pH, we can discuss. <laughs> uh, this depends on the growth rate. I will, I will have one more slide, so maybe we can discuss there. Uh, I uh, tried to opt for a continuous, uh, uh, continuous uh, facility, so meaning sludge going in and sludge coming out continuously, <laughs> not, not this uh, big bucket. Uh, as you tried, you had this batch, uh, at least in your first uh, easy setups, you had the batch, and you just added some sludge uh, sometimes. I opted for a continuous process, so uh, I could go with aerobic. This means the bacteria grow much faster. I can have a much smaller facility compared to anaerobic. For anaerobic treatment, you need a huge uh, treatment plant to compare to the, the size of your fish tank because you need retention times of 10 days or in this, in this uh, size range. Uh, so there is some uh, maintenance uh, issues uh, because for aerobic you need to add oxygen but you need, don't need to control the temperature if, if you're in colder uh, climates. So aerobically, aerobically you uh, uh, heat up the fermenter. Uh, in in aer anaerobic uh, you, you might need to add some, add some heat. And also we saw today that uh, uh, or at least I read from Boris's one paper that Anaerobic sludge was a little bit more uh, better for uh, anaerobic sludge effluent was better for plant growth. At least in one paper, some of you guys showed you. Sorry. So uh, this is uh, the the blueprint, or not my reactor, but I took uh, took the idea from someone's paper that I, I tried to build this uh, aerobic granular sludge reactor. So I, I added uh, an airlift pump there, so I will move around the sludge continuously. Then at one point I have this small area where the heavier particles uh, fall down back to the reactor. The lighter particles will be carried on to the next uh, container uh, where they settle. And from this you can take the effluent and send it to plants and the sludge can be either sent back to here or treated anaerobically. So this was uh, my idea. I can, at one point, if the reactor uh, starts working, you, you will always have these granules that are uh, more dense and heavy, will fall uh, into the bottom and uh, light uh, or more clear water should flow to the, to the, to the second chamber. Uh, I wanted to uh, start with a growth rate of 0 0.3 per hour, so it's a retention time of three days around. Uh, this is above the level of growth rate of phosphorus um, uh, accumulating bacteria. So these bacteria will not grow in the reactor because they 
they can't maintain growth rates 0.3. So there shouldn't be too much accumulation of phosphorus in the, in the sludge. And it should be uh, made, uh, made available by the reduction of pH. So does it... They are formed of bacteria, so you have different layers of uh, bacteria there. Inside you should have hetero heterotrophs and on the uh, top you should have some uh, oxotrophic bacteria. So it's uh, bacteria and uh, some protozoa also uh, that should start growing uh, in these aerobic granules. For me, I didn't have any place to take an inoculum, so uh, this is a natural process that should also start, but it takes a longer time if you start it without any uh, inoculum. So I Things inside these granules is aerobic? Uh, no, it gets more and more anaerobic the, the deeper you go, but the faster you uh, pump through, the smaller granules you have and uh, the more aerobic you should have in the, uh, in the middle of the granules also. So it, uh, this reactor setup is very much dependent on how fast you pump through uh, your, your liquid. So I think as far as I uh, research, no one has done this on a fish sludge. Uh, so it's a bit difficult to, to model and to very precisely predict what will be happening, but at least this worked on, on dairy industry waste. Uh, they got the reactor working and, and it was effective. Well, the so, so the, what is new, the, the design of the reactor or the granules? Sorry? Why did you say that nobody tried? No, nobody has tried this on fish sludge. Aerobic uh, continuous uh, a granular aerobic reactor uh, has never been as far as I've read so I had one week to read a granular aerobic reactor I, I've never seen been used in uh, in fish sludge treatment so as far as I researched, it seems that it could be uh, could be a useful technique because it allows continuous uh, flow through and you can control what starts growing there. And basically what you want is just uh, to reduce the pH as fast as possible, get the phosphorus and in the second part you can add uh, your uh, anaerobic digestion to reduce the volume of sludge if you see the sludge volume is too high uh, for for just releasing. So there are, yeah. The optimization criteria, it all, all goes back to uh, the beginning. What do you want to get? Probably uh, you will not get too much money out of it, depending on how, how high is the price of phosphorus, how much labor you need to put in. So uh, unfortunately, the director is still in startup phase. Uh, <laughs> Six weeks. Uh, I already when I came here, I, I I didn't have too much background, so I started researching, and I understood that the fastest you can start up this granular or whatever uh, digestion system, it usually takes a month, half a month.